Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. We talk about the problems people face in their day-to-day -day lives. Let's start with the video. I, 35, male, have been married to my wife, Heather, 32, female, for six years. We have two children, a four-year-old daughter and a two-year-old son. I work as a software engineer and make a decent salary. But Heather has been struggling to keep a job for more than a few months at a time. In the past few years, she has lost three jobs due to her poor attitude and behavior toward coworkers and customers. Each time she was fired, she blamed the company, her boss or her colleagues, for being unfair or incompetent. The most recent incident happened last month when she was fired from a retail job for yelling at a customer who complained about her service. According to her former employer, the customer was polite and patient, but Heather snapped at her and called her a bitch. The customer complained to the manager who had to apologize and offer a discount to keep the business. The manager then reviewed the security footage and saw Heather's outburst, which was the final straw in a series of customer complaints and absences. The manager fired Heather on the spot and told her never to come back. When Heather came home and told me what had happened, I was not surprised, but I was disappointed and angry. I had warned her before about her behavior at work and how it could affect her career prospects, but she dismissed my concerns and said that people were too sensitive and demanding these days. I tried to be sympathetic and asked her what she planned to do next, but she said she didn't want to look for another job. She said she was tired of working for ungrateful bosses and customers who didn't appreciate her. She said she wants to focus on herself and her hobbies and maybe start a business or a blog someday. She said she didn't want to be a wage slave anymore and that I should support her dreams. At first, I thought she was being sarcastic, but she was dead serious. She said she was not going to apply for any jobs or attend any interviews and that I should cover all the household expenses from now on. She said she deserved it because she had been contributing to the family income for a while, even though her jobs were short-lived and low-paying. She said she wanted to be a stay-at-home wife and mother and that she would take care of the kids and the house if I paid her a monthly allowance of $3,000. I was stunned by her request and her tone. I told her that I couldn't afford to pay her that much and that it was unfair for me to bear all the financial burden while she pursued her hobbies and whims. I told her that we had bills to pay, debts to clear, and savings to build, and that I needed her to help me with those responsibilities. I also reminded her that we had agreed to have children and raise them together, and that it was not fair for her to expect me to pay for her decision to avoid childcare and parenting duties. She had always been reluctant to spend time with the kids, citing her job as an excuse, and I had to take care of them most of the time. I had no problem doing that, but I didn't want her to take advantage of my generosity and neglect her duties as a wife and mother. She didn't like my response and accused me of being selfish, stingy, and controlling. She said I didn't appreciate her sacrifices and her talents, and that I was just using her as a tool to make money. She said I was a hypocrite for complaining about her spending habits when I had bought her an expensive engagement ring and allowed her to overspend on the wedding. She said she was entitled to her share of the money and the lifestyle we had built together and that she would leave me if I didn't comply with her demands. My wife has always been a spendthrift. She loves shopping and going out to eat frequently and she never thinks about the consequences of her actions. She's been known to max out credit cards and take out loans without telling me. Recently, another incident happened that added to my concern over Heather's spending habit. A few months ago, I discovered that she had sold her engagement ring without telling me. I had given her the ring as a symbol of our love and commitment, and it had sentimental value to me. When I asked her why she had sold it, she said she needed the money to buy a designer handbag that she had been eyeing for a while. I was shocked and disappointed. Not only had she sold something important to me, but she had also used the money to buy something unnecessary and frivolous. I asked her how she could justify such a decision, 
And she said that she deserved to treat herself once in a while and that the ring was just a piece of jewelry that didn't mean much to her. I was hurt by her callousness and lack of empathy. I felt like she didn't understand the value of things that were important to me and that she didn't care about our shared history and memories. I also felt like she was using our joint account as a piggy bank that she could dip into whenever she wanted, without regard for our financial goals and obligations. I confronted her about this incident as well, and she apologized half-heartedly, saying that she had needed the money for an emergency and that she would buy me another ring someday. But I knew that it wasn't just about the ring, but about the trust and respect that she had broken by selling it without my consent. Her spending habits are the major reason why I don't want to agree with her demand for pay. But her ultimatum shocked me. I had never expected her to threaten me with divorce over money, especially when we had been through some tough times and had overcome them together. I supported her through her previous job losses and encouraged her to pursue her interests and hobbies. But I couldn't support her if she refused to contribute to our household and our family. I also couldn't afford to pay her $3,000 a month, as it would consume most of my income and leave us with little room for emergencies or investments. I tried to reason with her and find a compromise, but she refused to listen to me and accused me of being unsupportive and unsympathetic. She said she was going to stay at her sister's place for a while and think about her options. She took some clothes and personal items and left with our daughter, leaving me alone with our son. I was heartbroken and confused. I didn't know what to do next, but I knew that I couldn't let her dictate the terms of our marriage and our finances. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay Heather for staying at home after she lost her third job in five years? Update 1. Two days have passed and Heather is still at her sister's place. My son has started asking about Heather as we haven't stayed away like this before. Even when we fight with each other, I'm the one who initiates reconciliation, but I think I'm going to sit this one out and wait for her to contact me first. Update 2. Heather has successfully manipulated both our parents to side with her in this argument. Our parents said that I was wrong for not supporting Heather's dreams and aspirations and for expecting her to work and contribute to our household. They argued that Heather has been through some tough times and has a right to take a break from work and focus on herself. They also said that $3,000 a month is not a huge sum for a family of four and that I should prioritize Heather's mental health and well-being over my financial goals. They want us to rework the marriage for the kids, but my friends believe that Heather was lazy, entitled, selfish, and in the wrong for expecting me to pay for her mistakes and her extravagance. They help me see how Heather has a pattern of irresponsibility and immaturity and that she needs to grow up and face the consequences of her actions. $3,000 a month is a significant amount of money, so I'm very confused about reaching a position. If I go according to my plans, I will have to convince my parents that's a pain. Update 3. Heather has moved in with her parents with her son now. I have lost both my children, but I didn't want to drag our issues to court. We have had problems in the past, and each time these problems were solved by healthy conversations. So I tried calling Heather, hoping to mend the issues between us. After trying to contact her multiple times, she took my call and threatened me that she would report me for domestic violence. I knew that my wife was not perfect, but this made me realize how manipulative she is. I consulted a lawyer friend of mine who advised me to stop all conversations with her for a while. And if a conversation became necessary, he asked me to record it. Though it breaks my heart to accept it, I feel like my marriage is over. Reflecting on the past few years has made me realize how toxic Heather has been towards the children and me. I'm planning to file for divorce soon and will fight for custody of my children. I didn't think about divorce as an option because I was raised anti-divorce by my parents. They are not going to like that I'm ending my marriage, but this time I'm prioritizing myself over them. 
NTA, run away as fast as you can from your wife. The inability to maintain a job for five years speaks a lot about your wife's character. How could you forgive someone who sold your wedding ring to buy something so useless? She's narcissistic as she cares only about her life, completely ignoring you and your children. I don't think your marriage was worth saving in the first place. You and your wife want completely different things, so it will create more trouble in the future. My advice would be to stop wasting your time and energy in this relationship and invest it more towards your children. NTA, OP's wife, is a walking red flag, and it amuses me that he has been completely oblivious to this. If a couple is not on the same page about their finances, that marriage is bound to fail. That's the case here. By denying her the money that she has asked to give you, you're standing up for yourself for the first time. She has walked over to you multiple times in the past, so you should be proud of denying her request this time. Divorce is the only way forward, as I see no future for this marriage. Next story. Backstory. My wife, 41, female, let's call her Lisa, and me, 40, male, have been married for less than a year. We also introduced each other to our families in the past year. Her family lives about a seven-hour drive, mine about 20 minutes, so we see my family more than hers. This is already a point of contention, but not the point of this post. We figured we would alternate holidays, and for this year, my parents got Thanksgiving and hers got Christmas. Next year, we will flip that, but on to the story. My mom absolutely loves Christmas and giving gifts. Every year, she asks us to make a list of things we want to help her shop. I get it's a little childish for grown adults to make Christmas gift lists, but my mom enjoys it, and it's not much effort to put some small things on the list to appease her. So, come Thanksgiving, we are at my parents' house socializing, watching football. All four of us are football fans. And come halftime of the Lions game... My mom goes and gets two small pads of paper and pens and hands them to us and tells us to make our lists as she hasn't gotten any from us yet. My wife goes ballistic and starts yelling at my mom about how stupid that is and she is 41 years old and doesn't appreciate being treated like a child. This caught me completely off guard. She then went on to accuse my parents of favoring my brother's wife over her because she is much skinnier, which is not true and has no basis at all. My parents have never been anything but nice to her. Anyhow, she storms out of the house and demands we leave. I refuse and tell her she's making too much of it. She finally relents. We go back in and have a very awkward dinner. I write a few small things on the list for my mom and we leave. When we get home, she blows up on me that I should have had her back regardless if I agreed with her, as that's what married couples do. I told her that was not reasonable. Fast forward to Christmas. We are now at her parents' house. It comes time for the gift exchange. Her mother explains to me a tradition they've always done, but I'm free to not participate if I don't want to. The tradition is that they draw names to see who gets to open, but before you open, you have to answer a trivia question. If you get it right, you open and draw the next name. If you get it wrong, you don't get to open and draw a new name. I tell her, Mom, of course, I'll play, mostly because I want to respect their tradition, and also it sounds like a lot of fun. My wife breaks down in tears suddenly, and I'm confused. It turns out that this was not a tradition for them at all, but her and her family colluded to have a childish game to try and make me participate, and I was supposed to refuse. By agreeing to play, I ruined the holiday and they didn't even have the trivia questions ready for the game they invented. NTA, your wife and her family are super strange. That game doesn't even sound childish, and I don't understand why your wife got upset at your mom at all. This whole thing doesn't make sense. Your wife is bizarre. NTA. Look at this situation, though. I mean, so she had a fit, then tried to trap you into a situation to make you look like the bad guy? 
It's hard to believe this is real and an adult would act this way. NTA, I mean, my mother-in-law asks the family for Christmas lists every year as well. She'd rather not just throw a gift card at someone or put cash in an envelope, but get something to wrap that she knows the person will enjoy. I've never found it childish, though I admit to procrastinating on returning a list, mostly because I never know what to put down. The fact that she tried for a gotcha moment and got her family to collude with her on it, there's some red flags here. I think the two of you really need a good discussion about your family's expectations and so forth. And maybe some couples counseling. There's some big issues with what you've described happening. This isn't something you can let continue. Next story. Two days ago, my son got up early and went door to door, offering to shovel people's driveways for cash. I think he made like $75. Well, yesterday morning I woke up to someone knocking on my door and was very irritated. When I opened the door, a woman was standing there asking when my son was going to come to shovel her driveway. I told her I doubted he wanted to get up early for two days in a row, so he probably wasn't. She didn't like that answer. She said she paid my son the day prior to shovel her driveway for three days. This sounded unlikely to me. My son usually doesn't like to commit to things in advance like that. I told her she could come back and talk to him when he was awake. She asked me to wake him up, but I said no because he's on vacation, so why should he have to wake up early if he doesn't want to? The woman was mad and wanted her $15 back. I told her to come back later and ask my son and just shut the door. She came back at 9 a.m., and when my son talked to her, he said he never agreed to shovel her driveway multiple days, but that he would do it again for another $15. She was furious and said the price of shoveling a driveway is $5, and she already gave him $15, so he either needed to give her $10 or come shovel her driveway. He said no, he wouldn't shovel a driveway for $5. That's why he told her it was 15. If she didn't want to pay 15, she should have declined the offer. She told me to make my son give her $10, and I said no. I said they had a business arrangement, and it didn't involve me, so I don't care how they resolve it. She said I should shovel her driveway then, and I said no, because she woke me up, and I have insomnia, and I don't appreciate that. Normally, I'd shovel a female neighbor's driveway if she asked, and I have time, because I know it can be difficult. But I wasn't inclined to feel charitable towards her at that moment. She asked if I cared at all about the bad spot my son put her in, and I said I didn't, because he can charge whatever he likes for a service. And if she doesn't want to pay, that's not my problem. She said I'm an a-hole, raising an even bigger a-hole, and then she left. I know I wasn't neighborly, but I don't feel like it rises to the level of a-hole because I think she was entitled. But maybe I should have been more empathetic. Am I the a-hole? NTA, she was definitely taking advantage of him and trying to milk it for all it was worth. You and your kid handled it well. What I suggest for the future is for your son to hand out flyers for snow shoveling. Put everything in writing, then people can't dispute it. Clearly state it's a one-time service for this price. If they have two driveways, both of our houses had two driveways when I was growing up, add some amount for the extra one. When he has any takers, have him write down his phone or a small notepad whose driveway He's going to shovel what day and the time. Help him set his hours and manage breaks for food and pee. Awesome side hustle for a kid. And if he wanted to, he could have a few regular clients he helps every winter. Same with lawn mowing in the spring, summer. NTA, use this as an opportunity to teach your son there are some seriously fricked up, over-entitled gobshites out there. And from what you said, he handled it brilliantly. Your son earned that money fair and square. I know exactly how he would feel having to give back $10. Back when I was around 11, 12, I did a deal with someone to sell oak trees. I'd grown loads of them. They were decent little trees. 
I was to get $2 a tree for each one sold. When it came to being paid, the bloke said, and one pound a tree is agreed. I was quick, but he was an a-hole too, just like Snow Lady. And it really shook my confidence as to how someone could be so dishonest. Next time, hire a small truck to get your son to do snow clearing and removal. Then dump the snow somewhere convenient like a woman's driveway. Stay tuned for more stories from our girl relationships.